Hello, hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to our first Trade Risk live video stream with the man, Patrick Walker himself. Patrick, how the heck are you? Good to see you, Evan. Thanks. Doing great. Happy New Year to you. Always great to see you. And uh, and thank you for inviting me. I'm honored you asked me. I, sh I really enjoyed it doing last time. And um, I'll be on my best behavior at least for a while. <laughs> Yeah, I just talked to Patrick. I told him, here's the things you can't say. You got to be a good boy here on this podcast. And uh, <laughs> he agreed. He agreed. Um, <laughs> no, I, I love having you, Pat. And, you know, for those who may not know a little bit about your background, we did an episode uh, about a year ago. It's, it's a super popular episode. I still get tons of good feedback. People love you for good reason. Uh, and that's why I wanted to have you back because you tell it like it is. You've got 30 plus, 35 plus years of trading experience. Mm -hmm. And I just want to catch up and, and kind of shoot the breeze with you. So, yeah. Um, so yeah. And I, I think this will be fun. We can take questions. If you got comments, you got thoughts about the market, leave it in the chat and uh, we're going to get to it. And Pat's got a bunch of charts. I know he's rearing a go. He wants to show us some things. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, we're going to have some fun. We're going to hang out for 30, 45 minutes or so. And um you know, kind of catch up. But, you know, the, where I'd like to start is is 2022. Tough year, right? Markets down, yeah. S&P down 20%. Yeah. Uh, growth stocks down, what, cut in half, basically. Um, so it was, yeah. it was a tough year out there. I mean, I felt it. I felt the pressure. I felt the, you know, the, the, the weight of the selling. Someone yeah. like yourself, you've been doing it for three, four decades. <laughs> I mean, does it get Ever. any... Does it get any easier? Like, I mean, what were your thoughts? Did you learn anything from last year? Like, w just give me a little, you know, kind of outro to great. last year. Great question. First off, thanks for having me, Evan. I appreciate it. You do good work. And, and I'll just lay this out for everybody. Um, I respect Evan and his work. And it, he, he didn't tell me to say this, okay? This is just, I'm speaking from my heart. That's the way I am. But if if I didn't respect what he does and, you know, his foundations, I wouldn't do this because it just messed people up. So that's, you know, so I appreciate you asking me. Thank yeah, you. it was tough. Last year was, you know, it was frustrating. Lots of fits and starts and things like this. For, for those that don't know, I was doing this in 1986, 87. I was managing money and had a lot of money in a lot of different places, including Fidelity, and was running through different things with it. I'm a stock guy. That's it. I don't do anything else. I'm not a day trader. But getting back to it, yeah, last year was tough. But there was a there was something very positive. And it's something that we talked a lot about at, um, at Mission Winners. And it's, it's this, the idea that, and this is a great quote, only the still pool reflects the stars. I got all these quotes stuck in my head, but it's the honest to God truth. If you focus on clean and simple, clean and simple basis, clean and simple charts, stocks that are in leading groups, this is all quantifiable, all right? I'm not making this junk up, all right? Mm -hmm. And again, I used for those that don't know, I periodically taught statistics on a university level, advanced statistics. And so, yeah, I look at the numbers. I'm big on that. But we focus on certain foundations that we know work. Mm -hmm. And we'll stick with that. Clean and simple, leading stocks, leading groups, great numbers. Focus on that. And another point I'll say, mm -hmm. turn off the noise. Mm -hmm. All the inputs that are out there it can cause a person to lose their way. Yep. And you can say, how can you say that? Because I was one of them. Hmm. Where I'd say, well, God, maybe I should do this. Oh, I'm going to go there. Look at this. Look at that. And all of a sudden I said, I'm not, I'm not on the track that I was on before. I've derailed. I need to get back to the foundations that I know work. And, you know, and I'll, I'll share this. Many of you may know this, but some of you probably don't. I was an IBD meetup co-leader for 12 years. I've sat down to lunch with Bill O'Neill. I'm firmly ingrained in the methods and the systems, and I use them. I'm not a day trader. I'm looking for the best of the best. And again, simplicity and turn off all the noise. Just, just focus. In fact, I don't have, um, I'm not going to have the broadcast TV going on in my office all the time because it just, there's, there's too much high drama there. And mm. so- this works. And that's yep. what I stick with. So to, to put this in a nutshell for you, though, last year was frustrating. And we're going to look at some charts. Yeah. But if we say, OK, I need to control risk, but I know what I need to look for. I know mm -hmm. what I need to do. 
and I'm going to do that. And I will always control risk. This, can I say one thing real quick here? One more point. You got the floor. Let's go. Let's hear it. Thank you. Focus. And I type this every day. Focus on clean and simple bases. It does not need to be a cup and a handle. Okay. And again, I was an IBD meetup co-leader. I mean, I was big on that. Okay. It's awesome. Bill O'Neill changed my life. I will tell you that. That's the honest to God truth. But focus on clean and simple bases that everybody can see. But if you are going to wait for the good, clean cup and handles, you're going to starve to death. <laughs> they don't happen enough. Okay. Yeah. That's a fact. And, and you can say, why can you say that? I'll tell you what. I was the sole support of a family of six. I had to find some ways to make money. And that was it. I had to find a couple of ways to do it. No day trading, but I put all these things together and it's it's not something that happened over the last year or two. Mm -hmm. It's years of study, years of looking at charts. I was told people at the meetings, if you want to get better at reading charts, understanding charts, look at a lot of charts and pretty soon things will start coming together. You'll see recurring patterns like, oh yeah, this works. Oh, look, look at this. And some, a lot of times when this happens, it fails. You put that together and it'll change your life. Yeah. It'll change your life. And Evan does a lot of work with, I said this before, Evan does a lot of work with charts and he's good with charts and he didn't pay me to say this. Okay. I just, I respect his work. If he didn't, I wouldn't be here. So, and I'm glad you're all here too. So I know that was a long answer, but I wanted to lay a few things out. No, I, yeah. I, I, I love it. I mean, one of the, I mean, honest to God, you know, the, quote that stands out from me, from you or and you tell me maybe you borrowed it from someone you've got a lot of quotes in your head right but from when i think of last year right one of the things that i remember you saying very distinctly was i'll believe in what i see and not in what i believe right Amen. and when i think about 2022 and the year we had right some of these stocks that maybe were down 50 60 percent and you're saying to yourself oh that's cheap or that can't go any, that can't go any lower, right? You know, if you have that yeah. mentality, that narrative, that belief, it's a dangerous thing if you're a trader, right? Because yeah. guess what? When a stock goes from an 80% drawdown to a 90%, that's that's cutting your capital in half again, right? So like stocks yeah. go cheaper, right? And the chart is the truth. And that's something that I think you were very, very astute on last time we spoke, right? Is that your quote? It's not my quote. I wish okay. I could take credit for it, but I can't. And uh, yeah. you know, I'm not going to plagiarize, but, and I can't give credit. I forget who said it. I got all these quotes stuck in my head, but it's something that, that really, really helped me. It, and I've got to give credit to one other person from years ago was Dr. Martin Zweig. He passed away years ago and um, he had a profound impact on me. I, I'm very thankful that I got to meet him a couple of times and talk with him. But on Wall Street week, he forecasted the crash of 1987. And he had, you know, he's looking at the charts and everything. And I had charts in front of me. And I said, you can see things. They're rolling over. More and more things are doing this. More stocks are doing this. And it's like, if all of a sudden I'm seeing everything starting to roll down, it's telling me, get out. And yeah. That was the real foundation was I'll believe in what I see and not in what I believe. It's like, well, this has to happen. Why? Because you think so? Because I think so? No. Right. Right. Let the market tell you what to do. And it also does something else. And again, this is from a, a psychology background. And I've done a lot of research on stress and things like this. Is when we accept the fact, and this is my own quote, okay? <laughs> I'm goofy, but it's the truth. When we accept the fact we don't know the future. We see the future far more clearly. Mm, just I like it. what is, just yep. what is and watch it. But I have to stress this, please. I'm asking you focus on the weekly charts and yep. the daily charts and periodically, if you have to fine tune it down to the hourly or 30 minute, but don't get bogged down. I'm asking you, please don't get bogged down with a lot of fancy in and out trading. I only know one successful day trader, one, and he he's great. He's my brother from another mother. I've known him forever. And simplicity that picture this, let's be pragmatic. 
you want to buy a stock that when it pushes through a spot, it's going to go up in price, right? Mm -hmm. That's what you're all here for, right? I want to find things so I can dang thing makes money on it. Well, I had a buddy of mine in California who's a trader. He calls me up once. He goes, Pat, I found a pattern. This thing is awesome, man. And he's telling me all about it. And I'm like, well, we're looking at the charts and stuff. And he goes, this is the best part. Nobody knows about it. We're going to make a fortune on this. And I said, well, I'm not going to use his name. I said, well, uh, if nobody else knows about it, that means they don't, they won't see it. And he goes, yeah. And I said, well, if they don't see it, that doesn't mean that, that means they're not going to buy. Don't we want people to see what we see so they'll buy it? And he says, oh yeah, I guess that's right. <laughs> so <laughs> it's the idea. Yeah. Focus you gotta on get plain and simple. Anyway, gotta gotta get someone. Yeah, gotta get someone to 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 buy it off your hands right afterwards. Yeah. So, yeah, I um, yeah, I love that. Thanks for yeah. I, so thanks for clarifying the quote. Um, and yeah, every you know, it, I think it was so important for 2022. And one of the things you know, you talk about clean and simple. You talk about simple that a fifth grader can identify it. Right. These are all your sayings, whether or not you originated, but like you you preach these things and for great reason. And so one of the things that I like almost completely missed or was, I just felt I was late on in 2022 was the energy trade, that rotation yeah. into energy and energy stocks that came fast. That yeah. came, you know, I'll say it came out of nowhere. I'm sure some people were tracking it and some people were on top of it. Was that something you were able to catch? Like, were, were you trading energy stocks? Is that a sector you traded? And yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. We were, we were um, here. Well, we'll share the screen later. Yeah. Yes. And this is a great tactic. And I want to share this with everybody. Okay. This will really help you. Again, as Evan pointed out, lose the preconceived notions about what's going to happen. Then I have a list and I'll share it with you. I don't have any secrets. I have a list of ETFs, major industry index ETFs that I look at a couple of times a day. And I will, you can sort them by quote, sort a percent, or you can just run through, you can say, how many are there? There's like 30 of them. That's it. And yeah. what do I do a couple of times a day? I just scroll down the charts and we could do it here during this webinar. Yeah. Just go down there and, and I'll look and say, oh, look, there's strength, uh, there's strength in energy. Oh, look at OIH. Oh, that looks pretty good. ERX. That looks pretty good. You see a theme. They're yeah. buying energy. The charts are starting to turn back up. So then what do I do next? So I know that group is starting to pick up in strength. Leading groups and leading stocks. Here's a fact for you. The vast majority of a stock prices movement is related to the industry group or sector that it's in. I'm going to say that again real slow. The vast majority of a stock prices movement is related to the industry or the sector it's in. So if we see a sector that start or an ETF, an industry group that's starting to pick up in rank, what am I going to do? Hi, Job, I'm going to sit there and look at the leading stocks in the group the stocks that are near 52 week highs. And through that, you can find basis for me. <laughs> it's just all money goes there. Money yep. just goes there. Now I have to pause here and share this with you. Does it work every time? Nothing works every time. Nothing. So we always focus on a clean and simple base entry that everybody can see. Price is good above the line, pushes through and bad below. It helps you keep losses very much smaller. And you can say, well, losses, losses. Let's be pragmatic. Bill O'Neill, who's an unbelievable investor, he limited losses at seven or eight percent. If he never had losses, he wouldn't have to have the rule, would he? So let's be pragmatic. We're going to have losses, yeah. but we're going to control the risk. We accept the fact that it's going to happen. But clean and simple base entry, and we'll show charts, gives you a clean and simple base exit. The key point is this, though. Leading groups and the leading stocks in those groups. And so that helped us find, well, like one we've got right now that's running is Slumberjay. Mm. Slumberjay, which in a crummy market today, the Dow down almost 400, that sucker was up to not much, but it was up. Yeah. And we'll show you the chart so you can see why. Yeah. Leading groups and leading stocks. It works. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's get into some of those charts. So I'm gonna I'm gonna throw up your screen here in just a second if you're ready for it. And um I know you're born ready. So we're going to throw up some charts. Uh, if you've got questions or you got comments for Pat, your thoughts on this market, leave a comment. Uh, I'd love to hear them. I'm going to get Pat rocking and rolling with some charts here. Hopefully everybody can see it on their screen. And uh, yeah, let me uh, take it away, Pat. Very good. 
we're gonna and Evan again. Thank you for inviting me. I appreciate it. This is this is great. I love this stuff. Absolutely. One of the things I like to do is I like to frame up the market action with the the S and P five hundred. You can use the index or you can use the spiders. I use the spiders because I like to see the price and volume action. The volume action is more relevant during the day to help us make better decisions. I do have the Dow up here also, but I will share this with everybody. You all need to know this. I don't really give a rip about it. It's only 30 stocks. It's price weighted. It's really not relevant to our business. So we have a limited amount of money. We have a limited amount of time. Why don't we use both assets wisely? I'm not going to look at a bunch of junk that ain't going to help me. Just that simple. Now, if you want to use it, feel free. But here's the S&P 500. And you can see, looking at this chart, you got to put that over here. Sorry. Um, or if I do it here, you can't see it, my cursor. It's got to be on the chart itself. You can see this is this right line here, that mm -hmm. purple line. That's the 200-day moving average line. Okay? And you can see it's pretty rough. And I'll shrink this down a bit for you so you can see this. Now, I need to share this with you, too. You're going to get more than you bargained for here, okay? This will help you. And I say this to our members all the time. Mm -hmm. Protect your eyes. Hmm. You can say, what the heck are you talking about? No, please take care of your eyes. This is a, quote, unquote, eye-intensive business. So this is something I found through a tremendous amount of research because years ago, I did have a serious eye problem, all right? A black background combined with these colors right here, purple, mm. green, yellow, red, high resolution, high distinction between colors. It helps you see the chart patterns much better. I encourage you, That's wisdom. I'm not telling you what to do, but because I care about all of you, if you're looking at white charts all day, it's really hard on your eyes and it's difficult to, to differentiate, to differentiate, excuse me, between the chart patterns and the price bars. So mm. I've got this, that's point number one, black background. Also, green is up, green bars are up, and so are the green volume bars. Red bars are down. Price is down, the bar is red. It's that simple. This is the 200 day. The purple line is the 200 day. The green line is the 50 day simple. By the way, 200 day simple, 50 day simple on the green. The blue line is the 21 period exponential, okay? Mm -hmm. And the yellow line is the eight period exponential. Now you pick what you want. That's fine. But I'll share this with you. There's about two years of research on that eight period exponential moving average. And who really influenced on me on that? I will tell you, Ed Sakota, who I met decades ago. What a, mm -hmm. Every time I met him, he was, if you don't know who Ed Sakota is, Google him. Yeah, he's Google a treat. But it was so neat talking to him. Every time I said something to him, it was just him and me talking. This was in San Francisco at a, at a conference. I'd say something, and he would do this. He'd tilt his head back. He had bifocals. Oh, why do you think that is? <laughs> and it was always, he wasn't being a jerk. He was challenging me to think things through. Yeah. And that will help you too. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do this, you know, that Evan invited me was what he does. He wants to help people, and he does. And I'm, I'm, if he didn't, I wouldn't be here. And we, I want to do the same. But there's the color coding for you. That will make your life. It's easier on your eyes and you can see things much better. I needed to share that with you. Now, here is, you know, I'll scrunch this back. This was last August and, it, and it's fallen like a dang rock, right? When you see that, please don't impose your will on the chart. Let it tell you what to do. And when it's dropping like this, you could go short if you want or just leave the dang thing alone and wait. But there's another setup that's really good. And I have to share this with you all. And it's called the higher low setup. And I'll share this right here. This is back in June. I was in Colorado when this happened. That was an expensive vacation because I missed part of this. <laughs> but we were up in the mountains and that's the way it goes. We, we were crazy up there. Let me tell you. <laughs> that's but, where you like to have fun. Well, we, you know, I know you're a mountain guy too. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah, we can push the envelope sometimes, you know, <laughs> tell you what's great. Slide down your slide down a glacier on your back. Yeah. That was a different story. Those oh, were different geez. times. OK, so it falls, it rallies up and then it falls again and you have a higher low. This low is higher than this low. I'll make this bigger for you. Right. And then it rallies 
and then it falls again and it takes out this low. But now you have another low. This low, this is an important pattern, folks. This low is higher than this low. It's a higher low setup right here on that date, July 14th. And that is a good move. That's the higher low setup. This is one of the setups that we use. It's easy. It's not as it's not as easy as a clean and simple flat base, but I have to show it to you. Can I run with this just a little farther, Evan? Is yeah, that okay go for with it. You? Yeah, yeah, let's hear it. Okay. So you've got the higher low setup on the S&P 5, the spiders, okay? This is a list of stocks that I love. It's the max list. I want you to remember this higher low setup right here. And I'm going to leave my cursor right there, okay, on that bar. Well, I got to do this first, then I will. I got to scale back in time. June, July, you see that lift? And look at the run. Same time frame. Hmm. That's the higher low setup. This low is higher than this low. That's number one. Remember this, June, July, here we go. You can say, well, that looks awful. June, July, higher low setup right there. Same period. I think it was the same day. Higher low setup and note the March. There we go. Alibaba. I forget if this one did it. Hold on. Yeah. Look at this. Oh, that was back in May. Excuse me. June, July. It was ugly here. So that one doesn't count. There was another one in here, though, that was quite sweet. I think hmm. Netflix. Netflix. June, yeah. July. Higher low setup and a March. There we go. But this is the sweet potato right here. You'll love this. And that's the higher low setup, folks. Tesla looks like not so good right now. Hmm. June, July, higher low setup. There it is. That is a setup that I've used for, for a long time. Hmm. And it works. Hmm. I, I went off on a little bit of a tangent and I apologize. But the point is this. We need to master just one to three setups. Own them, make them yours, do nothing else, and you'll make money. And here's the beautiful part. Right here, you have a higher low setup, June, July. There's one here, and it rallied up and it pulled back, but it didn't take out the lows of this bar. I've got them marked, okay? And then it rallies, and then it does this, and you get another higher low, mm. and it runs. And the beautiful part is this. If at any time on this bar here, when it triggered, if it takes out the lows of that bar, you could sell it for a very small loss because you know what? The best ones, they just go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That is a great, great setup. And I wanted mm -hmm. to share with you. So I've got the max list and I use those and that really helps us. Evan, can I do something really quick with your permission? Can yeah. You yeah. Let's, the ETFs? Would yeah. Let's, okay? let's, let's hear the ETFs. And, and, you know, we do, while you're pulling those up, I, we do have a question coming in from uh, Ralph here on the screen. Uh, thanks, Ralph. Uh, I know you're lurking around a lot. So nice to see you here. But he was asking, you know, how you set your stops. Is it based on a failed pattern or a certain percentage? I know you just talked about that, that higher low pattern, right? Where you had an exit yep. point. So what here are we go. Uh, on this? Th that's a great question. By the way, I want, I want to share this with everybody. Yeah. There are no bad questions. Yeah. Don't be afraid to ask. There are only bad answers. Yeah. I'm not saying that to be cute or funny. There are no bad questions. They're all good. Why? Because it's on your heart. Mm -hmm. It's your money. You're serious yeah. about it. So yeah. feel free to fire away. I think that's important. Okay. Let's go back here. I'm going to show you. We, we did the, um, can we talk about the ETFs really quick? Just scan them. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go for that. Okay. Yeah. Let's, let's hit this. Cause I, I know we have a limited amount of time and I want to make it worth people's while. Yeah. So this is the routine that I do a couple of times a day. And it's like, well, how long does it take you? God, it must take me close to a minute and a half. <laughs> I mean, it's not that big of a deal, but yeah. this is it. I got all the major index ETFs and I'll shrink this a bit so you can see it. This is cloud computing. Okay. It looks pretty, it's below the two. It looks pretty dang ugly right here, doesn't it? Okay. Not a lot of power there. What does that tell you? Until this starts pushing through the 200 day, be careful with cloud computing stocks. Electric vehicles had a little bit of a lift here recently, but you can see the trend is down. Be careful with the electric vehicles. There's really only one that's you know okay right now, and that's Tesla. We're going to get to that eventually. But you can see the trend is down. I'll shrink this a little bit more. Watch this. There you go. The trend is down. Be careful. 
Dow Jones Internet. It's just going sideways, but it's been trending down. There's not a lot of power there. Do you see what I'm doing? We're taking a look in, at the at the major indexes. Stocks make up these things, make up these ETFs. And it tells you, there ain't a lot happening there. The IBD 50. Look at this. Yeah. I mean, and I'm not casting stones at Investors Daily, okay? No way. That's not it. And by the way, know this. I don't work for them, okay? I'm just a regular subscriber, just like all of you, okay? No, no deals here, okay? I just being strictly objective. But this is a great proxy. The leading stocks that IBD's done homework on. Look at this. Looks like crud. And that's not a reflection against the paper. No way. It's just telling you what the market's doing. The market's not that good right now. Don't argue with it. You can make more money faster when you get in line in a good market than arguing with it. Here we go. Goal. Now, this lifted right here. You can see that little base right there. See the volume on that bar? That was a buy right there. And that's why. And look at the run. And we still own it. There we go. That was on the key list. By the way, this ain't a case of Pat Bragg. And I'm just showing GLD, another one. Mm. And it's working. What yeah. did that tell you back here? Look at that pickup right there. It's saying, uh, and I'll do something for you. It's kind of going sideways. I guess if it takes out the, that those tops there with volume, they'd be pretty good, maybe. Yeah, you know, just going sideways. Oh, gee whiz. Look at that. Look at the volume pickup on that bar, folks. I'll make it bigger for you. Look at that. There's your buy right there. And right there. There you go. Clean and simple. Biotech's kind of choppy. I'll do this fast. Online retail is sloppy. Oil, energy is kind of lagging here, okay? Software technology is chopping around. Not a lot of it here. By the way, you can see why am I doing this? Not to not to irritate you. I'm showing you the routine. Mm. You, can I keep going with it? Is that okay with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Show us. Yeah. Okay. Uh, mid caps picked up a little bit. That's a little bit better. Here, home construction's picking up a little bit. You can see it's been trending. Back in here, you can say maybe I'd look at some home building stocks. There you go. Strength begets strength. I'm not saying by it now. Now you look at this one. This is the S and P 500 growth. What does this look like? I don't think it looks so good. Stay away from it. IWM small caps are starting to pick up a little bit. See that line I drew there? Maybe it's going to take out that top. Small caps. Continue onward. Airlines. Look at the move in airlines. Yeah, big move. There you go. We'll be done here. Nothing. Regional banks stay away from mid cap. Another a longer base here. I'll draw this for you. What does this tell you? Just like kind of like IWM. There you go. Maybe it's going to push through that top. Mm. Mid cap, that would be a plus. Oh, oil. <laughs> this is why I do this. Yeah. Because <laughs> Owen, excuse me, Evan mentioned, you know, looking at the indices and, hey, did you do anything with this? Look at OIH right there. You see the yep. volume pickup on that bar? See that base? Yeah, that was a buy. And it lifted. That was a nice run. Now yep. it's going sideways and it's starting to pick up again. What is it? And you can see, look at the volume coming into it here. People talk with their mouths and vote with their pocketbooks. They voted. They voted on it. What does that say? Maybe I should own some OIH or maybe I should look at some energy stocks. There we go. That's why I do this. This is uh, retail's kind of lagging here. Um, pharmaceuticals is kind of grinding up. Drugs, maybe some, if the market stays, stays bad, this will probably be good because people will need drugs. <laughs> Just yeah. kidding. Here we go. <laughs> NASDAQ 100, I'm about done. Picking up a little bit, but nothing really special. Yeah. QQQ, same situation. Retail is chopping around, not much there. Cloud computing, in one second, it says, I ain't looking at cloud computing stocks. You know what's great? It's good to know things to look for. Mm. To kind of, and there's also power to say, I'm staying away from that. Yeah. We have a limited amount of money. Why don't we focus on the areas where the best probability of making money? Mm. Silver's picked up a little bit. That's decent. Steel, look at steel. Look at that moving steel. Break out here. And does it again. I'm not saying buy it now, but you could have looked at some steel stock. Semiconductors chopping around. I'm about down. There's the S&P 500, the leveraged solar picking up. Maybe it's going to go across these tops. You can see, though, overall, yeah. what's the shape of the market? It ain't so good. No. Uranium. There we go. And here we go. Aerospace and defense picked up a little bit. Biotechnology lifted through. Be careful with biotechnology. Home builders picked up a little bit. Anyway, that's one thing I do a couple of times a day hmm. to find strength or weakness. Where to maybe put money and areas to avoid.
and it, there's energy, by the way. By the way, you see that little base right there? Mm. Yeah, that was. Um, yeah, that was a good move. That was sweet potato pie right there. That was good. <laughs> and it's still hanging in. So anyway, I know I covered a lot right there. Yeah. I wanted to try to synthesize all of it. Scan the ETFs and look for the ETFs that are showing strength that have a good chart pattern. And then you could take a look at either the ETF to buy or stocks in that industry sector. That's it. It's that yeah. simple. It, it's not that hard. It's really, anyway. I love it. Yeah. It's, I mean, you go, you go through it so quick, so objective. It's very fast, but you've, you've done it. You've put in the reps, right? Like you've done a ton of time on looking at charts. Oh, so yeah. you know what you're looking for. So I guess the cloud computing is a good example. That looks weak right now. Yep. You wouldn't even look, you wouldn't even entertain, right? Someone could come to you and say, Pat, look at this cool cloud computing stock. You're not really that interested though, right? Because you're looking at the sector and you're saying, eh, there's not a whole lot of strength here though. There's right? not like, there. Yeah. That's, that's how you're kind of looking at it. Evan, well said. That's yep. exactly right. Okay. And um, can I run with that for just a second? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Let's hear it. This will really help you. And this is not an opinion. This is a fact. Is You'll love this. This is research from Bill O'Neill and Company. 87%. This is from a book called 40 Great Stock Market Winners. Watch this. Ah, check it out. Let's see if we can hold that up there. There it is. I see it. Nice. See that? This, this is huge. Hmm. Look at that. I don't know if you can find it anywhere anymore. But these are stocks that made huge moves. This is from 1990. But the data is still relevant to today. And this, this, this is just power. Check this out. I got to hold this up here. I'm like a kid in a candy store. <laughs> Look at that. What are the, wow. Ink to, wow. Look at that. You can draw on, on paper. <laughs> Look at that. There you go. Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to waste cool. people's time, but I want to I share two data points with you. This is research from Bill O'Neill and Company. Okay. These stocks made huge moves. I was up 10% in a year. Forget that. No, we're talking stocks that went up 30, 40, 50, 100, 200% in a year. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's what we're after. Fact. And I'm a numbers guy. 87% of these stocks had earnings of 30% or higher before they broke out. I'm going to say that again. 87% of the stocks in this book, almost nine out of 10 had earnings of 30% or higher before they broke out. Hmm. Folks, that's an edge you can use. Nine out of 10 had earnings of 30% or higher. 86% had sales of 30% or higher before they broke out. Nine out of 10, isn't that what you want? That's the edge that we use, the best of the best. You say, I might miss something. I don't care. I want to stack the deck in my favor. Yeah. And this really helps me. That's great research. I'll share it with you. Awesome. Yeah. I love it. No, that makes, makes total sense. Yeah. It makes total sense. I love the routine and yeah, I mean, it makes sense on how you would catch, you're always going to be able to catch through strength, right? Charts don't lie. Yes. The sector rotation, the strength, the volume coming in, the explosion to new highs. So yeah, I appreciate it. You mentioned you left us on a little cliffhanger because I know everybody's eyes are on Tesla right now, but I know electric vehicles as a sector is not so hot. Any right. insight there on te like Tesla just an avoid or he's got some opportunity if you're a little quicker, shorter term? What do you it's think? Sweet question. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. We're in Tesla here. Okay. okay. Not heavy. Not heavy. Yeah. Here's the chart. And you all can see that this is, you know, it's been trending down. But there's a list of stocks that I put together and I've made a couple of changes in it through the years, but not too much. It's called the max list. Mm -hmm. And these are the big name institutional darlings. They're stocks that if you have a mutual fund and you open it up and they don't own Apple or they don't mm -hmm. own Amazon or Google or Microsoft, the managers are probably going to be fired. OK, these are the must own names. I scan these a couple of times a day looking for clean and simple entries mm -hmm. and it really helps. Mm -hmm. And can, can I run through them real quick? Is that okay with you? Oh yeah. I'd love to see a max list. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. Here we go. This is, and again, I, I I'm sure I don't have any secrets. Okay. It's like, Oh, what else was in it? No, I'm showing everything. There it is right here. There they are. Yeah. 
And I always start, this is part of my routines. I'm going to share something. I do this several times a day, what I'm going to share with you right now. I want to know what's going on with the market. All right. And I'm just looking at the day charts. I'm not getting fancy here. Here we go. The S&P 500. This is the 200 day. It doesn't look so good here, does it? A little bit of resistance at the falling 200 day. It needs to push through it. That's the S&P 500. It says, you got to be a little careful here. And again, it's below a falling 200 day moving average line. Here's SSO, the leveraged one. It's not even, check this out. This has touched the 200 day. SSO is below the 200 day. Okay. It tells you something. Mm -hmm. It's not, not a lot of strength. That's good to know. Right there is a powerful thing. It's like, okay, if I invest, I'll just make sure I don't go crazy. Yeah. Continue onwards. And I'm just showing you my routine. This is QQQ, the NASDAQ 100. I like to see what it's doing. It's below the falling 200 day. Not a lot of power there. Here's QLD, the leveraged one. I love, the folks, I love SSO and QLD. Oh, I love it. But right <laughs> now, it's just kind of sloppy. It needs to improve. MDY. Now, the mid cap, look at this. Do a compare and contrast. There's the NASDAQ 100 leveraged. Here's MDY. Yeah, big MDY. difference. Oh, it's a little bit stronger. What can you do with that? Say, maybe I should look at some mid cap stocks. See? Limited amount of money, limited amount of time. Let's use them both wisely. And you can say, what am I going to do? Scan all the mid cap stocks? No. You focus on stocks. As I said, you all can recite it back. What are the minimum threshold numbers you look for earnings and sales? You now know that. You can use it. There's another very important variable for you. Focus on stocks in the top 40, preferably top 40 industry groups. You will dramatically increase your potential to make it money. That ain't an opinion. That's a fact, okay, from O'Neill and Company. Here's another one for you. Focus on stocks with a composite rating of over 90, 90 or higher. You will dramatically improve your investing results. I want to synthesize all this for you. Focus on stocks that last quarter's earnings were up 30% or higher, or last quarter's sales were up 30% or higher. Focus on stocks, preferably in the top 40 to 50 industry groups. Focus on stocks with a composite rating of 90 or higher. Focus on stocks that are over 10 or $12, $12 a share, and they trade at least 150 to 200,000 shares a day. Focus on stocks within 20% of 52-week highs. Focus on stocks with an accumulation distribution of A or B. And what I just gave you is a recipe to make money. Hmm. You can say, how did you just come out with that? A lot of that's research from Bill O'Neill and company and research that I've done. And also, as I said, I was a sole supporter of a family of six. My dad was dead. I was helping to support my mom. I had to make money. I had to. I had four kids in private Christian schools at the same time. It had to make it happen. All right. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. Got mm -hmm. serious with it. So what I share with you will help you. So let's go down here. Mid cap. I'm going to do this real quick. IWM is picking up a little bit. Small cap leveraged, picking up a little bit. Here's Apple. I don't see a lot of power. I don't see a lot of good stuff right here. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Nothing clean. Here's Amazon. It's picking up. But watch this. There was a small shelf right there. Mm -hmm. You see it? There was a big reversal bar here. It followed through a little bit, mm -hmm. a little bit more, and then volume came into it right there. And what was it doing, folks? So you connect the dots. What yep. did it do here? It gapped up and pushed through the 50-day moving average line. We all know about the 50-day. You can use it to your advantage. I'm not saying buy this, okay? Yeah. But I'm just pointing out the setups. Let's continue onwards. Alibaba, you see yeah. that nice long base? Everybody can see that right there. And yeah, this was on the key list and VIP members, they own it. We're in it. There you go. And it's working. Look at, by the way, people talk with their mouths and go with their pocketbooks. Folks, look at the volume on that bar. They no. There it is. Clean and simple. And here's the beautiful part. I'm going to take this a step further for y'all. You'll love this. And this is what I tell the VIPs all the time. Price is good above the line and bad below. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like the best that. Ones, you know this, Evan. You do it. The yep. best ones just go. Yeah. They just take off. Everybody sees it. Think about this. 
If we focus on patterns that everybody can see, I've said this before, it increases the potential that A, they see it, and B, they're going to buy, they're going to act on it. Yeah. So there we go. I'll be done with this in just a second. Here we go. I do lift it through here. It's a little choppier here, though, okay? Mm -hmm. Google. There's really nothing clean here, folks, is there? No. Goldman Sachs, this had a tops here, but it never triggered. Mm -hmm. And then this bar here. Now, this is an important lesson for everybody. Please, I'm asking you, you must know when the earnings are coming out. You have yeah. to know that. And you have, Evan knows all this. He teaches it. Yeah. You've got to know, do they come out during the day? Do they come out before the open? Do they come out after the open? There were people that bought this right in here and today. Yeah, got slammed. That's a, and that's earnings. It got slammed right on, buddy. If you knew yeah. the earnings were coming, you say, ain't no way I'm buying it. And it would have saved you some pain. Here we go. I'm going to run through these really quick. MasterCard had a little shelf right here that it pushed through kind of mm -hmm. slow. Meta, really nothing there. There's nothing happening there. Microsoft just slopping around here. There's nothing there. Okay. Yeah. There's Netflix. You see that little shelf right there? It was mm -hmm. bought right there. Lifting through there in a volume pickup. And it's working. It's not huge, but it's working. But you can see the clean and simple base. All yeah. right. NVIDIA, you see the clean and simple base? I'll make this bigger for you. There yeah. you go. You see that clean? And, I drew this. <laughs> this yep. was on the list to buy. And again, I'm not bright, but you can see it's vanilla. Watch this. I love this. is a great tactic for all of you. It's, uh, it's going sideways. I can see that base right there. It's nothing too fancy. It had pretty good volume on that bar. Uh, gosh, I guess if it takes out that line, it's just a simple line, folks. It ain't nothing <laughs> fancy. Yeah, if it takes out that line with volume, remember, people talk with their mouths and vote with their pocketbooks. I want to go where they're voting. And it's measured by price action, backed by volume. Look at that. So you said, I guess if it takes that out, that'd be pretty good. Oh, gee whiz, look at that. I guess other people saw that and they bought. Yeah, it was on the key list. And it's working. There you go. Yeah, push it's on. a nice start. Now, I'm not saying it's going to continue, but it's working. We've already sold some and locked in some profits. And that helps us. Clean and simple. We're almost done with this. Tesla. Here we go. This is the one Evan asked about. Mm -hmm. By the way, I'll say this again. Evan knows his charts. He knows his stuff. And if he didn't, like I said, I wouldn't be here, but he does. And I, he didn't tell me to say that. Okay. No way. And I didn't tell him, well, I'm going to say hey, that's a bunch of crud. I'm just laying it out. He knows the charts. I also tell you this. He's simple and conceptually correct. He's not the kind of guy that's, oh, we're down 40%. Let's average down. He didn't pull that game. He doesn't do it. He manages them. Yep. But you can see it. Look at the clean and simple base right here on, on Tesla. It's just going sideways. And this is a great lesson. Right mm -hmm. here is worth your time. Okay. I don't know if you, I get kind of excited about yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I remember I was doing youth group in a church, and one of the guys asked me, these are all guys, seniors in high school. And he said, Hey, Pat, you ever have a Red Bull? Oh, God. And I said, Look at me. I said, If I had a Red Bull, I'd explode. They, they yeah. all just laughed. So, anyway. And yeah, but here, yeah. This is something really neat. Let's show you this. This is a great lesson for all of you. Please remember this. Just because it's a green bar doesn't mean it's a good bar. And just because it's a red bar doesn't mean it's a bad bar. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. Do you see this bar right here? Mm -hmm. You say, Pat, that's a red bar on increasing volume. That's a bad bar. Can you see that clearly, Evan? Or should I yeah, yeah, I'm seeing it, yeah. Okay, so I'll say it again. Just because it's a red bar doesn't mean it's a bad bar. No. Do you see where it opened? Mm -hmm. Right there, a the little hash mark to the left. It fell, and then it closed. Where did it close, folks? It closed right near the highs. These are the things we teach all the time. Close on a pickup in volume. What does that tell you? Man, looks like they're buying this sucker right here. By the mm -hmm. way, that's 113. We're saying maybe if it takes out these tops here, that would be cool. I'm going to show you something else that's really cool that I've done at Mission Winners and long before that. I was I was doing this back when I got here, going way back. Ready? <laughs> See that date? That's the 13th. Let's look at the 30-minute chart. Right here, that is, this is the 13th. Mm -hmm. See the volume coming into this, into the close right there? Look at the volume pickup on mm -hmm. that bar. 
It was surging into the close and they were buying. Here, I'll do something for you. Let's do this. There it is. That's mm -hmm. the close. No. Nope. Oh, you know, you can say, well, maybe I could buy some. Not necessarily, but it does tell you some big money might be moving into this. No. Yep. We can wait and see if it takes that out. And so then what do we do? We go back here. That's the close of the 13th, of the 12th, excuse me, of the 13th, right there. You can see the clean and simple line. We said if it takes out that line, that could be a potential buy. But what will it need? Here's a great quote for you, and I've I say this a lot. People talk with their mouths and vote with their pocketbooks. I used to say that at the IBD meetups forever. I'll say it again. People talk with their mouths and vote with their pocketbooks. Go where they're voting. Yep. That will help you. So it's going sideways. If it takes out that white line, clean and simple tops, folks. It ain't fancy. Okay. There's nothing. There's no algorithms with it. Okay. Stochastics. No, I don't need it. Oh, and it lifts through there. You can say, oh, okay, that's today. Gosh, I wonder how the volume was this morning. I'll say it again. People talk with their mouths and vote with their pocketbooks. How did it do near the open this morning? And this is a great tactic for all of you. And this isn't fancy. Yeah. Take a look at the daily chart, which I have here. And if it's doing it right near the open, you could take a look at the hourly chart or the 30-minute chart or the 10-minute chart. Hourly. 30 or 10. I stay away from five minute charts. I don't look at them. They're too close and too much, too much emotion in them. But this is today. What happened this morning? I'll show you the hourly first. Look at the volume on that bar. Yep. Okay. You say, well, that's, I got to wait a dang hour before anything happens. Here's the 30 minute. Look at the volume on that bar. Yep. Look at the 10. No. Yeah. Gap go and trend. Amen. You know it, buddy. Mm -hmm. Folks, Evan teaches this stuff. Look at the volume on that bar, folks. They voted. They voted. You can say, well, okay, if I'm buying it, I just want to make sure that, uh, you know, it doesn't take out the lows of that bar then. Okay, I'm going to run it tight. Well, I'm okay. Oh, I guess I'm okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. And here, I'll just click to the other. There you go. Yeah. That's, that is a real world tactic that can help you. And mm -hmm. that is why I, this was on the key list. That is why I look at the max list stocks, what I just shared with you every day, a couple mm -hmm. of times a day. There is serious money made in these stocks. And I'm going to flip that coin and also share this with you too, because we're in the midst of it. We are in earnings season. Okay. Folks, this is the result of earnings right here. Look at how this closed yesterday. It closed right near the highs on a pickup in volume, but they have earnings coming. I'm, I'll say this because I care about all of you. Please be careful buying just before earnings. You could be a hero or you could be hurt. Yeah. And yep. if it does do that, don't argue with it. David Landry, I credit David Landry for this quote, and I had this taped to my monitor for over 20 years. I'll believe in what I see and <laughs> not in what I believe. I'll say it again. And the VIPs that are listening to this right now go, God, he does say that, don't he? <laughs> I'll, believe, <laughs> I'll believe in what I see and not in what I believe. Get in line with what is happening, factoring in both price and volume, and it will lead to clear decision making for you. There you go. Boom. Yep. Gone. Don't argue with it. So no, I love no it. Think, are coming out. There's the moral of that story. I feel like we need to uh, contact like a fortune cookie company and, and we're going to get all your quotes in some fortune cookies. Right. And then you, you, know, you see these things and you'll be like, I know who said that is Pat. He told me this on a podcast. <laughs> oh, I got to share one with you. One of my professors in college, yeah. he had a, he had a poster I don't know. I don't know it's probably two feet by two feet, whatever. He was, he was a great guy. He, he, he really challenged me. Let me tell you, this is when I was going through graduate school and he was, he could be kind of a jerk, but that, that was good because it challenged me. It was a picture of two vultures sitting on a, sitting on like a, a cactus in the middle of the desert. Mm -hmm. Okay. Pardon my language, but I think this is cute. It's not that bad. 
one vulture says to the other one, patience, my ass, I'm going to kill something. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> yeah. You know, and th that's the exact opposite of what we want to do here. We're going to wait for it to happen. I'm sorry if I used foul language. I, I didn't want to offend anybody. Okay. But I think it's kind of fun, you know, yeah. folks yeah. Um, take this very seriously, but enjoy the ride too. Yeah. En en enjoy that. And if you're losing sleep over your stocks, I read this in a book year decades ago, sell down to your sleeping point. Oh yeah. That'll really help you. Anyway, well, uh, we got yep. some more stuff we can ask or anything like that, buddy. Yeah. Uh, I don't awesome. Know for time. No, no, I appreciate it. I appreciate you walking through the Tesla example. That's a real actionable. I mean, that's a today example. So I appreciate you going through that. We do have a couple of questions uh, coming sure. in here. So let's see if we can bang a couple out. Um, so Ralph, um, Ralph is asking us about the SLB, the Slumber J. They do have earnings Friday. Would you, you hold... It. If you, let's see, let's see, would you hold if you just bought this breakout? Would you buy into earn EPS? This, hmm. this is a great, by the way, I have to share this with you. First yeah. off, I compliment you for your questions. Secondly, you're not afraid to ask questions. Yeah. There are no such, this from a professor I work with, there's no such thing as a bad question. There are only bad answers. Okay. This is your money. Please don't be afraid to ask questions. Yeah. Okay. I know Evan's the same way. He wants to field questions. I do the same thing. Look at this clean and simple base right here. Slumberjay going across here. Had a volume pickup on that bar versus these previous bars. You see it right here? That was a buy right there. And we did. We bought a couple of times and we sold into strength a couple of times. And there's a reason why. Because A, the market's not in the best of shape. It's still not in the best of shape. You saw that today. Yep. Okay. And second, got a little bit extended in price. And we know where earnings are coming. Third. OK, so what do you do in a situation like this? Good question. If you bought right, knowing that earnings are coming. I'm asking you, please, I'm not telling you what to do. Yeah. All right. Be careful carrying a full position into earnings. Yeah. You could be a hero or you could wreck yourself financially, but you could also wreck yourself psychologically. There are two major assets in investing. There's the financial asset. And there's the mental. Oh, yeah. These protect both of them. We've got rules and tactics that we use so that we don't have any problems. And I've, I've talked to people that they've called. I've had men call me up crying and go, I don't know what the, and you can say the word, but I won't. I'm going to do now. I'm getting killed in this stuff. No. I'm not saying that to scare you. It's the real world. And I'm not oh, yeah. saying it's going to happen to Slumberjay, but it can happen and it can mess you up financially, but it can also mess you up psychologically, which leads to a good point. If you haven't read it yet, and I don't get anything for this, okay, please read Market Wizards by Jack Schwager. Market Wizards by Jack Schwager. Classic. He's written several book. books. Market Wizards by Jack Schwager. And the last chapter is an interview with Dr. Van Tharp. And I had the great pleasure of meeting him in California, too. Oh, talking nice. with him. It will really help you in investing because yeah. the biggest part of this, the biggest part of this business, folks, it is not what's before your eyes. It's what's between your ears. And you got to have it screwed on straight. And if you're going through a really rough time, OK, um, back off. Yeah. Back off. If you're if health issues with you or your family back off please i've been there back off it'll yeah. help you yeah so, real, anyway. real talk and yeah super important absolutely i love it yeah i mean it's great advice and again you know uh ralph thanks for the question i mean you know you need to make your own decision of course but like i think selling into an event right like harvesting gains into an event taking it down to a position size that you're comfortable with like you, like Pat said, that you can sleep easy at night because uh, you know earnings are often coin flips, and they can they, they can move big in both directions. So it's just you gotta be mentally prepared for that. Okay, no, um, that's it. I love it. Thanks, Pat. And and we got another question here uh, from Manish. Manish, thank you for being here. Thanks for the question. Um, they're asking if you could take another look at XBI. I know that's actually been on a lot of people's radar and it looks a little dicey. It's trying to work, but it's a little indecisive. So what, what do you yeah. see in here? This is great. I'm going to open up my shades. Hang on a sec. Yeah, yeah. Get some light in there. 
There we go. We're bringing on that briar. Oh, okay. Let's do it. Okay. I got to say something else to you. Okay. Yeah. Y'all you know, are going to go, but oh, pants crazy. I need to share this with you. Periodically, I used to teach outdoor um, survival skills at higher elevations. At like, I mean, like 12, 13, 14,000 feet. There's lightning up there. And you can say, what's that have to do with anything? It has to do with your living, just like this does. You don't want to get killed in the market. Um, a lot of people say, oh, if there's lightning, you got to lay down on the ground. Don't do that. Okay. I'm going to be blunt with you. Don't do that. If there's lightning, this is what you do. Crouch down, preferably just on your feet. Don't put your hands down on the ground also. Then you have four points of contact instead of two. Mm. Crouch down and get as low as you can. That may be help you from um, protection of lightning. And uh, Evan's going, what the heck is he doing here? Okay. Uh, and so here we go. We're taking a look at, I've shared this with other people before because I've, I've been above the lightning before. Oof. Looking down on it and Oof. smelling it. Yeah. So here's XBI. It's going sideways. Had good volume on this bar. Now, here is a great lesson for everybody. I color code my price and volume bars. I encourage you to do the same thing. And remember this. Just because I said this before, just because it's a green bar doesn't mean it's a good bar. Mm -hmm. Just because it's a red bar doesn't mean it's a bad bar. And I'm going to give you the perfect example. Do you see this bar right here? I'll make this bigger for you. So you can see it. You see that bar? Because a, that's a red bar on heavy volume. That's one ugly bar, Pat. Do you see where it opened? See the little hash mark to the left? Is that big enough or should I make it bigger, Evan? I, I can see the hash on the left. Yeah, I got you. Okay, buddy. Right there. It gapped down versus the previous day. It fell and it ran up. And it closed below, oh no, excuse me, it closed above where it opened. Mm -hmm. Most, they bought on that bar. They bought. There's the open. There's the close. They bought it up. Mm. But there's another point. And this, this is the real world stuff. And this isn't fan. Here's the thing that's beautiful about what we do. This is simple. This is, it's not like, God, that doesn't make any sense. I don't know how the heck that happened. No, it's simple. It closed above where it opened. They supported it. But how did it close on that bar? Right. Middle of the range. Exactly. Evan, you're, see, Evan knows all this stuff. Yep. Yeah, it closed near the range. It, what, it didn't close with a lot of power. If it had closed up here, that indicates more power, as Evan pointed out. Evan knows charts, by the way. He does. Right here. But it didn't. So there's some weakness right there. It just tells you, be careful. And you see that line? Price is good above the line and bad below. Seven or 8% losses, that ain't going to happen. Okay? Run it like a business. This is why we love clean and simple bases. I can't stress it enough. You find clean and simple bases, you'll sit there and go, yeah, that, that's where money is. Look at... Oh, it's too tough. Hold on. Yeah, good old PDD. Yeah, can do oh duo Look, at, price is good above the line and bad below. It's vanilla. And then fancy, anybody could see that. There you go. If you stick with that mindset, it will dramatically improve your investing results. I mean, I could show you, I could show you others, you know, we won't get all wrapped up in there. But well, here we did slumber, Jay. Price yeah. is good above the line and bad below. It's vanilla. Here you go. Look at this. Look at this. Found, here, Valeros. Yeah. Price is good above the line and bad below. Fell a little bit below it. Okay, right here, but still maintain it. Price is good above the line. Here's Halliburton. Price is good above the line and bad below. Over and over. If you can say to yourself, I'm going to focus on that. A good above the line, bad below. By the way, I'm not bragging here, okay? Please, I don't get wrapped up in all that stuff. I just, yeah. I'm trying to show people what I wish somebody would have said to me. He said, hey, Pat, let me, let me show you something here, buddy. Because it was, it was, when I started, it was 1980. There was no internet. Yeah, yeah. In fact, right. Evan knows this. Yeah. I went to the library and grabbed Wall Street journals yeah. and drew charts by hand yeah. to get an understanding of stuff. I mean, yeah. is that crazy? It's wild, huh? Yeah, it's not. Anyway, We're spoiled. <laughs> yeah, God, yeah, it's it's just awesome. It's so, it's you know what's great, team? It's financially rewarding and it's mentally stimulating. Yeah, it's neat. It's good and it's mentally satisfying too to say, yeah, I see some things, and that leads to another point for all of you. Please always be grateful and thankful 
and always be humbled. Research indicates that for most investors, this is a fact, not my opinion, for most investors, their biggest losses occur after a strong run of profitability. We get the Midas touch. Everything we do is going to turn to gold. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, you, mm -hmm. get, you get kicked. Mm -hmm. You know, Evan, you know. Oh, I know it. I know it. I know it all too well, right? Anytime you're feeling pretty good or you're looking at your account balance saying, oh, it's a new high in my account balance is sure enough, you know, the next week you're going to get, you're going to get hit across the face, right? Mr. Market gets loves slapped. to, yeah. Loves That's to it. Which Evan brings up a great point. Don't look at your account balance too much. Yeah. Don't, don't exactly. look at it. Nope. Focus on good investing execution. Yeah. Notice I didn't say trade. Okay. I'm saying investing. Focus on good investing education. And that will help you a lot. Stick with the rules and never, I'll say it again, never let a good profit turn into a loss. Cardinal sin. We're here to make money. I'm not here to own stocks. I'm here to make money. I'm going to say this again. I am not here to own stocks. I am here to make money. It just so happens that stocks is the vehicle that hopefully will get me from point A to point B. And point B is a higher value than point A. There you go. Hard point. I love it, Pat. It's always refreshing talking to you. There's Pat's information. I know some, I got uh, Ralph. Ralph, thanks for the questions. And, and I do recognize the name, Ralph. So thanks uh, for supporting Trade Risk. I know he's a Mission Winner subscriber as well. So we appreciate that. Missionwinners.com at Patrick Walker 56 on Twitter. That is the man that you've been listening to. Thank you. I sincerely appreciate Pat uh, taking the hour today to spend with us and sharing Thank your you. insights. Anything else before we go? Any last uh, words? No, I just, um, I'm honored that you asked me. I thank Always. you, sir. And, and I don't take it lightly. I think you can all see, uh, I don't ever want to steer anybody wrong. Yeah. Okay. And I temper that with this statement. You're saying, well, oh, then, Pat, you never have losses. Oh, no, no. Yeah, everybody, anybody who never has losses is either lying yeah. or they don't do this. But if we find and focus on stocks that have all these components we talked about, great earnings and are great sales and leading groups and a clean and simple chart formation that everybody can see, it will dramatically increase your potential like this. I mean, folks, look at the volume there. It's just, it's good above the line and it's bad below. Focus on those, narrow your focus down and, and it, it will make it, it will make it easier. Just yeah. um, focus on clean and simple, turn off all the noise out there. You'll be, you'll be better for it. You'll be happier. You'll be more focused. Um, it just, it's better for you and all the people around you. And as they say, if you're losing sleep over your stocks, it was in reminiscence of a stock operator. Sell down to your sleep point. All right. Don't let this eat you up alive. But it's a heck of a lot of fun. Anyway, Evan, <laughs> I'm honored you asked me. I thank yes, you. Absolutely. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks so much, Pat. Thanks everyone for tuning in. We're going to do some more of these shows, some live streams, bring on some different guests like Pat. And uh, hopefully we'll have Pat back. Hopefully he says yes. And uh, maybe in a couple months we'll catch up. We'll see how 2023 is going. Yeah. So thanks everyone for tuning in, Pat. Again, thank you so much for uh, taking the time and uh, we'll see you in the next episode. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Take thank care. You. Bye now.